Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make something from the game Minecraft. I'm going to make a piece of redstone ore. One of the reasons I like the idea of making the redstone ore is that it has elements that glow red. So the base foam that I'm using is plastizote foam. It's translucent and will glow with a light behind it. This is the same foam that I use for making my glowing Miss Minutes prop from Loki. In fact, this is more of the same sheet. I cut five panels from the foam, all equal in size. I set up some guides with some paint stir sticks so I can make a bunch of equal cuts. And the tool I'm using is a 45 degree V groove cutter from Cos Tools. I know all the edges will need to be cut at exactly 45 degrees, so I just use a single blade in the tool. As for the sixth panel, the bottom of the cube, I cut that one out of foam cork. And just to be sure that the panels will work, I check the fit between the plastizote and the foam cork. It's going to work just fine. I didn't want to just paint the textures onto the sides. I'd rather have a dimensional look to these textures. Joe used a picture of the in-game textures and created cutout templates based on the colors of the redstone. Then organized the pieces for cutting with a silhouette desktop cutting machine. And by nesting the individual pieces closer together, and not just leaving them where they'll go, we didn't need to use as much one millimeter EVA foam. That's right, the foam that this machine is cutting is just one millimeter thick. And by using a desktop cutting machine, all the pieces are cut out correctly, and they're all perfectly square. And all the pixels on the sides are gonna be the same size. This is so much easier than doing all the cutting by hand. We still needed to remove the pieces by hand, removing the parts that we didn't want, and the lightly adhesive mats held the pieces together while they were cut. One of the other things I really wanna have happen with this build is I want this block to glow. So before we really get into gluing all the pieces to the sides together, getting all those painted, I need to make sure I've got a center core of some sort that can help all the red pieces glow. I think I'm gonna do that with some battery operated LED lights because that's some of my favorite stuff. I test just where I need to put the lights for maximum color and the least amount of individual LED light spots. Two layers of plastic foam seems about right and I'm getting the look that I want. I measure how thick the two layers are and that's just how much open space I want inside of the cube. I'm gonna make a box to go inside of the redstone and I mark where it'll need to go on the foam core base. I double check that I have enough LEDs for the project. Okay, so I can go around a little more than twice and then I can do a couple of on the top. All right, that, that hopefully will produce enough light. If it doesn't, I can always wrap more of that on there and solder it to it and it'll help increase the light a little bit. Um, I cut the cube parts that I'm gonna need from some more packing foam. This is a polyethylene foam and it is also translucent. But the sides are nowhere near as smooth as the plastizote. Now, it could still work for the walls if I didn't have any of the smooth stuff. I get the inner cube glued together with contact cement. I first measure one of the sides for where the holes are, and then I mark the cube for the best place to stick the LED strip. I also had accounted for the thickness at the bottom. I want to power the LED strip with a rechargeable battery. I make sure I have space for it to fit. I cover the sides with contact cement and let it dry because the LED strip is self-adhesive. Sticking it to contact cement is so much better than just hoping the LEDs will stay stuck to the foam. One, two, three, four, five. I can get five LEDs on each side of the box, and I decided that I was gonna cut them into individual strips. That way I can get more LEDs to glow where I need them, you know, because I've separated them. I don't end up with LEDs on the corners. And I have more for the top this way. Now the only drawback to this plan is that I need to reconnect all the pieces, so it's time to start soldering. I made a lot of cuts to the strip, so it takes a while to get them all reconnected. Well, let's hope I get enough light from that. That's all the LEDs I've got, basically. Suppose it's not, I've got a tiny bit more. I added the last little bit of LED strip I still had keeping the placement balanced so no one part would be brighter than another. Then I glued the inner cube to the foam core base, and I also cut a hole in the foam core so I could fit the power bank inside of the cube. 
Then I taped up the five panels just to see how well they would glow. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that glows. That doesn't glow tremendously well. That's not like phenomenally impressive or anything. Maybe I do still want to put a few more lights on that, but that at least does glow. So, um, good. I think I am going to go ahead, I want to be done, but I think I am going to go ahead and attach some more of this other string of LED lights on it, just to make it a little bit redder, a little bit brighter. I spent the next hour adding even more LEDs to the cube. Funny thing about more LEDs, they need more power. I mean, everything is still five volt, but it draws more amps. I glued all the LEDs on, but I added so many LEDs to the cube, the single battery pack just couldn't power them for very long. Not that I knew that yet. Joe came back to help glue three layers of texture onto each of the five faces of the redstone. The first layer had the cutouts for the portions that would glow. Sticking the one millimeter foam onto the sides and heating them on correctly was a little tricky, but we got all five sides on without wrinkling any of them. Next, we get to apply the first texture layer. So, that's the side the glue goes on? Yep. Okay. Yep, so that's gonna be fun. Do we want to... I can start... Do we want to do corners first and work our way into the middle? Because if we do the middle one first, it'll probably be crooked. I agree. I agree. To start, we both took just one panel and applied contact cement to them. And then we each stuck our texture panel onto the main side panel, which also has contact cement. Then moved on to more complex texture panels. For the tiny little single pixel panels, sticking them to painter's tape really helped for getting glue onto them. Then it was easy to stick them onto the side panels. Well, easy if I used a small carving pick to help me. Joe liked the challenge of applying the really complex shapes. <laughs> I was happy to let him do it. We both started sticking all the texture panel pieces to painter's tape. It's much better than chasing the tiny pieces around the desk while you're applying glue to them. Joe had also printed out the placement of all the pieces for each layer. This is the second layer of texture parts. You still need to figure out where they go, but having this placement guide map was really nice. The third layer of texture has fewer pieces, or fewer big ones anyway. It's neat to see the shallow texture from the sides. It kind of reminds me of the Aztec paneling that Starfleet has on their starships in Star Trek. These are much thicker than the starship plates. The dried contact cement really helped the transparent red spray paint stick to the plastizone. It would probably have stuck just fine without, but I didn't see any beading of the paint. It didn't pull away and make little spots of color. After the paint dried, Joe made sure all the sides were still smooth by grinding down the bits of craft foam that overhangs the edges. Five different custom shades of gray were mixed and put in the numbered cups. The idea was that we could always know which layer had which number of gray and we could keep all five sides the same. Applying different shades to different layers, as well as selectively painting new pixels, as needed. As we covered the panels with all the different colors of gray, there were some corrections that were needed. Some of the corners were made sharper and some of the painting mistakes were corrected. And that was all very easy to do because the paints were numbered. The sides were painted with a number five dark gray to cover the light leaks. Still looks like Aztec panels to me, but mostly the colors are too clean. I mix up some black acrylic paint with a little water and make a black wash. A grungy, dark, dirty wash that I can just cover over the clean panels and then mostly wipe off before it dries too much. Before I started the wash, all the panels were sealed with a clear coat spray. Now that is important or else I would start wiping off the five color paint job that Joe and I did. And there'd be no way to fix that. After adding the watered down black paint, the numbered gray colors would no longer match. As I worked through the five panels, the last ones were dirtier than the first that I had started with. So I had to go back and apply more black paint to make them all match. That's a whole lot more dirty. Now I'm really happy to see that the red areas are glowing just like I was expecting. Now that it is fully painted, dried, and sealed again, I can glue the side panels together. Not only do I need the corners to match, but there is a right side up for each of the textures. So all the sides need to have the same orientation. I glue the sides to the bottom next. 
I can see inside and press against the foam core without wrinkling it. But the top just gets glued on. I have to get the corners correct and sharp and 90 degrees. Easy. Well, easy-ish anyway. It's fun. I understand that I'm basically building a highly decorated box, but it's still fun to see this all come together. Now, I've been looking forward to hooking up the battery pack and seeing it glow. How bad are the corners? Not too bad. There's a little bit of light leak coming out of the corners. I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, there's a little bit. But that actually worked really, really well. I want to cover over the cracks and the light leaks that are in the corner joints. I go back and paint over all of them with the last of the number five dark gray paint. Most of the materials I use for this project I already had in the shop. I put a list in the description. Okay, so this is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy to have a Minecraft prop actually made for my YouTube channel. Um, this was fun. Thank you for giving me a hand with this, Joe. It was a lot of fun to help you out with it. Thanks. Uh, now, this is a first for my channel, but it's not a first Minecraft build that I've done. No, it's not. And you also made the diamond pickaxe for TikTok. On my TikTok. Yep. One of the, I think, 12 or 13 videos <laughs> I have on TikTok, because I've got such a massive, mighty presence on TikTok. But uh, no, that's it. This is actually a lot of fun to do, too. But uh, in both cases, the size of the pixels become kind of important to try and figure out what size you're making. This feels good as, as a size for working with my hand as a hand prop, but it's a little small. This is freaking micro compared to how big it's supposed to be, right? Right, it's supposed to be a meter by a meter by a meter. Yeah, there's no way I'm building that. Yeah. <laughs> that's no. a lot of foam. That's a lot of foam. And LEDs. And LEDs. <laughs> that's way too much. This thing is already maxed out. Just, just as a side note, and I'm sure some of you who know LEDs better than I do, uh, we're already calling out that I was putting on too much on here. Yeah, it draws enough power that poor little battery doesn't last very long at all. <laughs> but it does work, so I'm okay with it. And it looks good. It does look good. I, I think, I think, uh, you did a really good job with it. I Thank think it you. It's great. I'm very happy with it. Uh, it does actually look a little bit better with a little bit darker. There's so much light on it right now because we're shooting with the cameras. It's a little harder to see that it's actually glowing, but it is actually glowing red, and I think it'll look great on a shelf. Yeah. But um, we'll get there. Uh, the whole reason we built a Minecraft thing isn't just because I haven't done it before, and it isn't just because Minecraft is this insanely popular game that's been around forever, but uh, I'm actually going to be launching a Minecraft server in conjunction uh, or available to people who are part of my Patreon. So if, if you're, uh, go ahead and check out odinmakes.com slash Patreon and anybody who joins at the $10 or above level will get access, 24-7 access to the Odin Makes Minecraft server. Right, and you're going to be jumping on at random times and then also throughout the week, right. you will set aside a time. Mm -hmm. um, not the same what we do with Among Us on Fridays, right? but various like times, different days, so that people who are all around the world that are patrons will have a chance to play with you because not everybody can log on and play with you during Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific right. time. So yeah. I, I, I want to make sure that I can play with all my friends from anywhere, wherever you are in the world. So yeah, definitely going to be, gonna be right. different random times. Uh, when I'm going to be on, we'll be posted on Patreon. Uh, we'll be posted on Discord because everybody who's at the Minecraft level will also have access to the private Discord. So uh, that's going to be really interesting. I'm, I am looking forward to learning more about Minecraft. It has been forever, if ever. It's hard to remember at this point. If, since I've touched this game. I know I never really went super in-depth to it, but a lot of people tell me, no, 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 it's a lot like Lego, Odin, you'll love it. It's like, all right, it doesn't have the bumps. It's all totally equal to each side, Lego's not. It's really hard for me to get past that, but okay, it's like building blocks like Legos are building blocks. So this, this, I'm looking forward to it a lot. Uh, and I also hear it's got a lot of mathematical and education. Well, yeah, aspects. so yeah, you, you can program in Minecraft, right. like with the redstone, which is, we built a redstone or block, right? Mm -hmm. So you can use redstone components to make logic gates and make computers. Like, right. like somebody built a graphing calculator in, <laughs> in, in Minecraft. Like super cool stuff that you can do. 
not anything that I'm going to be able to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or me. Right. Um, I, I, I can hotwire flashlights. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make I'll make opening doors and, and okay. like little small redstone contraptions that are fun, like secret secret stuff. But so um, the server is going to be open for everybody to be able to play. The, the you know there's 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 you have to be a certain member to get access to it, but the server that's being set up is going to work with both the Java platform and the Bedrock platform. Right. So uh, Java is only accessible on the PC, okay. um, and Bedrock is the platform that is used for consoles, for uh, uh, tablets, for phones, all of that stuff. There's also the Windows 10 edition. That's Bedrock. Uh, okay you'll be able to access our server through all of those too. So it's cool. cross-platform. It's not something that you're normally able to do, but we've got a pretty cool plugin that lets you do it, so. Good. Uh, I know also uh, over on the Discord, Nora, who takes care of the Discord and, and is doing a lot on, on that end with helping us set up the Minecraft. Thank you, Nora. Um, she's been working on making something in there as, as a welcoming thing. So there's some sort of a surprise to me. I haven't been on to see it yet. I've been letting letting these other two kind of take care of it and I'll just pop in. And, and so that'll be fun for me to see. Uh, I'm looking forward to what it is that, that she's built that, that's in there as the welcome home build thing or whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> You'll like it. Okay, that's good. It's fun. Oh, that's good. So. So a whole other place that you can you can see me and interact with me, and I'm looking forward to it. And looking forward to what you can make in Minecraft. So definitely, please, if if you're so inclined, check that out. Um, I'm trying to think. I think we've hit just a no. I have one other thing that I needed to bring up that I really wanted to bring up. Okay. Yeah, you've actually done a Minecraft build before. Oh, yes, I have. Wait, is this from my? Yes, isn't it? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is this is what I used so that I could see in my Minecraft costume, and it's no wonder that I couldn't see out of it. <laughs> <laughs> would, would Would you like to explain this a tiny little bit for us, please? <laughs> I think we'll just run the video. Oh, okay. Joseph Grosso, Judgment Minecraft. <laughs> so that was 10 years ago. That was 10 years ago. Yep. And it was also my very first costume. Your full first cosplay. Very first full cosplay. Yeah, yeah. Because I'd be surprised if that was your first costume. <laughs> but, okay, the very first full cosplay that right. you'd made. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Believe it or not, falling on stage was a lot of fun. It didn't hurt. I didn't get injured, right? Like, I'm not like that one guy who was uh, dancing on stage and he broke his leg. True story. That's, yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, uh, I actually won an award with that, really? with the online contest that followed the the uh, in-person contest. Because okay. there's no way I was going to win any awards. Yeah, no, not, not there. There's a lot of, yeah, serious cosplay there. Right. But I actually got eighth place. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Really, really fun. Well, and, yeah, I've... Um, Falling on stage is, yeah, that could be fun too. And <laughs> that's nah, been a long time, but you know, Pratt falls and things. Yeah, I get it. At the end of day one, the screen that says, we'll see you tomorrow, had the picture of me falling on stage with my, <laughs> with my little hand up. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, well, on that note, <laughs> as you can see, there's lots of different ways you could make a cosplay, a prop, or a smaller prop from Minecraft. But this is how Odin makes.
<laughs> that's been sitting up on the shelf for I don't know how long. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, you can see. Yeah. It's just not very good. Right, I remember asking you about that when you are putting that together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I had this glass custom cut specifically for this project. Right. So, nice. Yep, this brings me back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see oh, that. I hope the mic picked that up. <laughs> I'm glad to see that in 12 years, nothing has changed. <laughs> oh, that's glorious. We are the Borg. Resistance is futile. You will be assimilated. <laughs> and there it goes. It's on, it's just... Well, it flickered, right? Flickered, yeah. yeah that's, that's when it starts running out of power. Oh. When it starts running out of power, it starts to flicker. Oh, now, there we go. it didn't get a chance to fully charge. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, <laughs> it does not last long. It lasts longer when it is a full charge. So, all right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and charge the battery. <laughs> I want to thank Leah Jones, Delane Embry, James Allen, and all of my Patreon supporters. Patreon members at the $5 and above level get access to my private Discord, which includes weekly games with me, prop related chat, and early access to live streams. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.